my dear students welcome back to this mini angel school i believe you are all happy and safe at home once again welcome you all back to this social class so hereafter i am going to continue the social classes for you so i believe you completed till half the portion of the sixth chapter that's our heritage so i am going to continue the portion and from the next class we have revision so let me complete this portion today okay before getting into our class i think i can give you a wow factor that will uh, lead you to our class directly so here yeah, today's wow factor is India has the tallest statue in the world measuring 600 feet that is 182 meter in height it is called by the statue of unity the statue which is a tribute to the independence leader sardar vallabhbhai patel is located in the western state of gujarat where patel was born so that's it today's wow factor let's get into our class fine now let's start our class So, what do you know about heritage? What is mean by heritage? Let's see the synonym of heritage. Heritage is tradition and history of a country or society that holds for years. Okay, fine. You have synonym part there, so okay, clear with it. So, heritage. So, the sixth chapter is all about our heritage. So, you complete the monuments part, paintings part, dances part. music part so today we are going to see about language literature and dresses only three parts today so i will i can wind up the class today so that i can go with the revision part in next class okay first language literature and dresses let's uh, see about language and literature So language India is a country that have more than 50 languages Can you believe that more than 50 languages because we have it's like separate separate like for we have 22 major languages 33 official languages and number of rural languages so number of dialects that's important so let me deal with dialects a little later let it be there so more than 22 major languages one of the major languages is yes tamil in india one of the major languages is tamil but english doesn't comes under that major languages but english comes under official language so we have more than 33 official languages so english is one of the official languages but tamil is one of the major languages clear so here what about dialects dialects in the sense for example let's take tamil language tamil we know tamil so We know that we have we are speaking Tamil and different dialects. Dialects in the sense slang. Have you heard about that slang? For example, in Kanyakumari, we are speaking the same Tamil in a kind of form, and in Chennai, they are speaking it in a kind of form. It's also Tamil, and this too also Tamil. but the slang the kind the way of speaking is entirely different that is known as dialects the other words means accent slang the way of speech okay so this is a thing uh, and also the rural people will speak a kind of tamil urban people will speak a kind of tamil rural in the sense village side urban in the sense cities so that differs so that's what mean by dialect so we have in even in tamil we have many and many dialects in coimbatore they speak a kind of tamil in madurai they speak a kind of tamil in kanyakumari we use a kind of tamil and in chennai at that form so the forms will differ this is not dialect so we have more than 22 major languages and more than 50 languages 
and we also have tribal languages what do you mean by tri tribal languages yeah adivasi so they have other kind of languages so totally in india we have more and more and more languages so literature what about literature there are kinds of literature literature can be in oral form or as in written form oral form and written form written form in the sense in a sense kind of book it is registered or printed in books that's an written form or in manuscript manuscript in the sense the original script like notes you are writing with pen and paper right so likewise so written form is something that has been registered oral form in the sense voice over it's following by generation to generation just by words for example for example let's take a oral story from tamil i believe you all know that story paati vada sutta kada everyone knows that can you please raise your hands as you know that story yeah most of you know that story right paati vada sutta kada yes we know that story but we don't know that who wrote that story or it was in which book we don't know that just like if you ask me i would say that my mom says that story to me if i ask my mom she'll say that yeah my my mother that means her mother that means my grandmother said the story to her and if i ask my grandmother she'll say that her mother that means my great grandmother said the story to the my grandmother this is the process so this is following to a generation to generation see the, but the story goes by to generation to generation in the form of oral format yes they are only doing it in a oral format not in a written format my mother she didn't write in a note and gave that to me she just told in a oral form by words she told to me about that party vada sutta kada we all know that yeah a grandmother is preparing vada and all of a sudden a crow can we know that i am not going deep into that so this is the form like was the literature is like oral and written form and other than they having religious literature and non religious literature so for example the non religious in india like there are more religions so i'm not going into that but in tamil nadu we know that yeah christianity hinduism islam and then any other religion you know in tamil nadu jainism buddhism i don't know whether we are following in tamil nadu i am doubtful and skeptical about that but still so we are following christianity hinduism and islam and i think there are jainism and buddhism so these are the common religion here so the road the books about these religions for example sira puranam is actually about jesus christ so it's religious and mahabharata it's related to hinduism so kind of books right these are known as religious books and apart from religious thoughts if a book is written that is actually actually not religious books okay so this is all about literature and finally about dresses dresses in the sense i'm now wearing chudidar we all know that the word chudidar and our traditional heritage kind of yeah traditional dresses sari yeah that's what we are saying okay fine sari so now a days we are using different types of dresses is yes, for example sari salva kameez kurta so many for uh, for men it's like uh, kurta and dhoti kurta and veshti we have more kinds of dress let me i will try to display those pictures for you you can see that you can combine with the states in india so i think let me display those dresses then it will be helpful for you to understand easily let's do that
So these are the dresses that we are following in India. And these are followed in different states. So and also not only dresses. There are certain patterns. It's for like traditional patterns. For example, in Tamil Nadu, sari, we know that if sari is a common word, but especially silk sari, patta sale. That is our traditional view. So this kind of some patterns are they following and also some designs, stone designs, geometry designs. So that and all some patterns. It's also coming by traditional, like generation to generation. So many heritage and traditional values we have. So like uh, you already saw that monuments and in uh, paintings, uh, dance, music, language, literature and then and dresses. We are following many traditions that's our heritage. You are protecting that, right? So please don't spoil our heritage. You know, your little kids, please bring your heritage with you. Grow your heritage along with you. So this is about, all about the lesson. So, if you have any doubts, please ask me in Zoom session. Okay, dears. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.